Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I am going to do a sketch of my little uh, brush pitcher. It's basically like a like a little creamer dish, um, creamer container, I guess you'd want to call it. And I thought it'd be a great way to try out some new acrylics that I got that are called Aquela, and they are from the Japanese company Kusabe, and they're. Um, Basically, their product is supposed to be all you need for art. That's kind of what their uh, what their selling point is. And apparently, you can use these acrylics uh, similar to Elkid, which is an oil product, um, similar to watercolor, tempera, you name it. So I thought I would start off just by doing like a demonstration to kind of show how they would work with like as acrylics. So I'm starting off with just a basic sketch and I wanted to have kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a, just a little basic sketch. And I thought, well, my brush pot is sitting right on my table. So I thought I would begin with that. That is, that horizon line is totally crooked. So I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. Okay. And I just sketched on with an aqua blend watercolor pencil because I knew that they would dissolve once I started to add water. Um, now I'm working on this canvas that's, um, I know it's a little bit rough and um, I did not pre-gesso it again. I mean, it comes with like a factory gesso on it. Um, I think I am actually going to use, you know what? I'm No, I'm actually gonna mix my own black. I'm gonna do some brown. And I'll do a little extra brown there in case I need some for something. And I'm going to do ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix my own gray, just like I would with watercolor. And I've just laid out a few other colors um, on my palette. And I'm just using a ceramic plate from the Dollar Tree. I really enjoyed using them for watercolor like that. So I thought that might be kind of fun to, uh, to try doing acrylics that way too. Um, I do have... You got to be careful when you're going to do, like I've got way too much water on this and it would be fine if I was doing it on paper, but um, it's really too much for acrylic. So I am going to have to add more uh, more color in there. So I'm just going to go in with some white and you can see me mixing it out on my plate here. I'm hoping um, this will make me be on the ball with cleaning my stuff a little bit better. The uh, brown must have a bit of a more red bias to it because it is, um, it's really kind of a purpley gray, but I don't mind that. I think that's kind of fun. I'm actually going to blot off some of this water that I sprayed on there because it's making my paint too thin. I had issues with these canvases flowing. These are the kind of cheapo canvases from, um, from AC Moore. So I just wanted to kind of try to kind of deal with that a little bit. And I'm just toning my canvas really right here. I don't, I think I'm probably right at about 30%, the, the maximum amount I should thin this. So I just want to make sure that it's going to bond well. I can feel that it's dragging more and I've really removed enough of the, enough of the water. I think I'll do a little bit. Oh, I have yellow ochre. I'm using way more colors already than I would typically with like watercolor, but I feel like when I'm using, um, I feel like when I use acrylics, Sometimes I need more, um, and that could just be my, um, the fact that I'm not, I'm not as, uh, experienced with acrylics as I am with, like, watercolors. Out of practice, definitely. I don't, I don't use acrylics very much, but I was very intrigued by this. I had a viewer ask me to review it, and I don't like to review a product till I've actually, I like to not just swatch it out, I want to actually use it and see, um, how useful I find it. I think a review when you're just swatching, I mean, it can be useful to compare it against other brands. And, you know, you can probably tell by swatching how good a paint is if you're really familiar with it. But um, I don't have, I, I've used Liquitex, I've used M. Graham, I've used um, Winsor Newton Galleria acrylic. So I'm not, I haven't used as many brands in acrylics that have watercolors. So I find it much more useful to actually paint a picture with it. I've used aqua gouache. I really like aqua gouache. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, that these paints will make me like acrylics a little bit better. Because I'm not a huge fan of acrylics. I want some warm spots on my table too. That's why I'm using the um, yellow ochre. And I'm just basically, I want to get like a, um, I don't want a super smooth texture. I want kind of something a little bit rougher. I 
And these strokes here, these back and forth crisscrossies, crisscrossing strokes uh, called scumbling strokes. They give you a great texture and they can um, give you a really interesting background. I'm going to cool down my shadow in front of the vase a little bit, so a little more blue in my gray. And I do need a little bit more white. It's kind of weird using white when I'm so used to using the uh, white of the paper with watercolor. I like the consistent consistency of this paint. It's not super thick, but it's not runny. It seems to be, uh, the coverage seems to be pretty good. I'm not worried that I've pretty much obliterated my sketch because um, it's kind of like writing down a shopping list. The act of writing it down is really important and so even if you forget your list, if you've written it down, a lot of times that's all you really need is just the fact that you've committed it to memory that way. That's what I find it helps me anyway. And again, I feel like I want a little bit more blue on this side just to, so I can have the light and shadow kind of juxtaposition. Now, if this is the edge of a table, I probably would still have a little bit of that light there. So I want to get that yellow ochre. I don't know how long this is going to take me, so hopefully it's not a terribly boring video. <laughs> And I like the rough, choppy edges, so I'm going to leave that. If you don't like that, you can bring the paint all the way around to the edges and, uh, and go that way. So now I want to get my vase in, and I am going to grab a little more white. I'm going to use a round brush to sketch, but then I'll probably use this nice angular brush to block in. Um, grab. Let's try this one right here. This is a Grumbacher number six round synthetic. And I'm going to keep looking up at my, I have my vase in front of me. So I'm going to keep looking up at that while I sketch it in. Shouldn't be too bad because I've already sketched it in once. The, the vase is kind of almost like a heart shape. I'm going to move it back a little bit actually because I can't see the bottom where it's sitting. very impressionistic. I'm not like really going for realism here. This is going to be kind of just fun and fast. And I'm winding out the bottom actually because I didn't paint enough background in there and I just want to uh... I don't like to have unpainted canvas between the background and the uh, the object. Uh, I'm gonna get the neck here And the edge of the vase goes all, it kind of lines up with the edge of the uh, kind of shoulder of the creamer jar there. Bring it back, come straight down there. Then we've got a kind of a high, elegant swoop. Okay. Now, whenever you're working with acrylics, it's very important that you um, that you put your brush in water until you can wash it properly. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of block in some white so I'll have an area I can mix into. And I will also try this out in a watercolor technique on paper just to see how it replicates a watercolor technique and um, this technique here would be kind of like how it, how it represents um, acrylics and oils because I, I would approach an acrylic and oil painting very similarly. And this is Aquela. This is what the paint looks like. I'll put a link in the video description. They're a Japanese company. Um, so, and all the prices on the website, they do ship worldwide, but all the prices are in yen. And a little, like, kind of a tip to figure out what it's going to cost in United States dollars is that I move the decimal point over two, two parts. So if it says, like, 47,000 yen, that's, like, 47 bucks. Um, so that, that helps me. It might help you as well. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting in some little details here. And there was like a kind of like a nice bright pink flower on the side. I'm going to start with that. Now, the nice thing with acrylics is I can glaze on um, 
I can glaze on like shadows and stuff later so I don't have to worry about that. And there's like a little bit of a rose over here so I'm just doing a, just choppy circular strokes to signify a rose. Let's do a little bud down here. And I can see a little hint of something over there and I'm just gonna suggest it. I tend to like to use um, stiff synthetic brushes for my acrylics because I feel like it pushes the paint around really well. And now I'm going to give it some leaves. I don't like that green on its own, so I'm going to do a little mixing there. A little bit of that brown in there maybe to dull it. So I get a nice natural tone. And I am going to put in some of these just loose leaves. Kind of like a stroke work. If you've ever done any... Um, any sort of toll painting, same deal. In fact, I think toll painting is a fantastic discipline. I know a lot of people say, I'm not a real artist, I'm a toll painter. Well, that's that's hogwash. You are too. The, the, the art comes from the mind. The art comes from the, you know, the thinking. And the craft is comes from the execution, the artist and the trait. You know, you have to learn how to express yourself. You can have the artistic ideas, but if you don't know how to express yourself, then you're not going to get very far, you know, conveying those ideas and the ideas I feel like the ideas are the art and the way you you express yourself is the the techniques you use are the learned craft techniques um, whether it's painting whether it's sewing whether it's weaving you learn those techniques and I had one uh, one friend of mine say the art is the drawing the painting is the craft meaning like you draw out your idea that the idea is the art and then how you decide to um, how you decide to fix it in a permanent form is more of the craft you have to learn the craft the craftsmanship of doing that and if some people like look at craft as being almost a dirty word and I just recently had a situation where where there was some of that kind of snootiness um, displayed and I think that's ridiculous. First of all, what would you care if somebody is calls themselves an artist or a crafter? I don't care. Call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. Um, but I just, I have very little tolerance for snootiness. I'm going to mix all phthalo blue and ultramarine. And I'm going to just kind of define up here. I do like the flow of this paint. And the coverage. I don't feel like I have to paint, repaint an area. Sometimes you feel like you have to paint an area over again. I do not like that. I think that's what kind of frustrates me. Um, sometimes I, I want to, I want it, I want to get it done. I mean, not that I want to get it done, but I don't want to have to do the same thing over and over again. Well, painting a ceramic object can be kind of fun because you've got the physical form that you're painting, but you've also have the decoration. I'm going to add a little bit of that uh, kind of gray mix that I made into my blue because it's just, it needs to be a little bit darker. Bloop. I like to go bloop. I do love how this flows. This flows really well. This canvas here, um, actually I'm glad I use this one. This is a very inexpensive canvas and I've had issues with this canvas before, like when I'm working with my acro gouache, is that it it drags and it's like, oh, I need to, uh, I feel like I need to pre-gesso it, like give it another coat of gesso. And sometimes you have to, like you have to give another coat of gesso. And I really think that if I'm buying a canvas already gessoed, then it should be gessoed. Um, and I'm feeling like this really smooths well. I think this would be nice if you do mural work. I mean, the, the tubes are kind of small for mural work, but I think that, um, I'm just doing a little scallop down here. I think that it would be, uh, it would flow really well on an uneven surface, basically is what I'm saying. So if you're trying to paint something that's in your home that is rough, I think it would work well. Like maybe you have an old weathered table on your porch and you want to you want to spruce it up. I think that this would be um, kind of a fun and effective way to do it. Um, I want to add kind of a little flourish in here. Now the flourish on my pot is in gold. I don't have any gold paint, but I'll probably mix up kind of like a brownish color to look like gold, but I want to have an underpainting and I think that this navy would be really good for that. I'll have to put a picture on my blog of the actual um, 
of the actual vessel that I'm painting. That way you can compare it if you want to. But I do encourage you to try uh, to freehand draw it. And I'll tell you right off the bat, I have it way too thick down there. Maybe I will kind of try to go in there and thin it out because it is, it is way too thick. So let's do that. Let's see if I can match my background and get back in there like I would be able to with an oil. Let us see, shall we? This is not how I'd recommend making sure you've got this all painted in right off the bat, but I'm curious to see if I can do it, so I'm going to give it a whirl. There we go. I'm going to pull those strokes out a little bit further because I want them to kind of blend in with what I have there. Actually, this is a pretty forgiving paint. A lot of times I find acrylics just, they just don't, they don't resonate with my personality. But these are pretty forgiving to work with. With the way I like to work, which is kind of like fast and loose. And I think this, this kind of, this uh, scumbling stroke is pretty um, forgiving as well. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry so I'll be able to glaze some shadows over it and make my gold and all that jazz. And now I am going to go in and paint some paintbrushes sticking out of my, um, of my pot there. And let's start off with, I hope this doesn't look like I'm poking you in the eyeball because I've got a fairly long handle <laughs> brush here. So I'm sorry about that. I don't mean to poke you in the eyeball. Look how I'm using my whole arm when I do that stroke, because I'll get a uh, more steady, sure stroke if I do that. And I want another one in this color handle going that way. And I'll do some reddish brown handles. A little yellow in there. These colors mix really cleanly, which I'm happy with. I did, um, the, uh, the pigments I used for these uh, Aquila, Aquila paints were, are really nice. They're using artist quality pigments. Oop, that wasn't very straight. Uh, and they're pigments you would recognize as being uh, quality pigments, light fast pigments. So I was very pleased to see that because sometimes you do, you just wonder, is this like kind of a gimmick? Because sometimes there, there's, there's a lot of gimmicky companies out there that, that, uh, kind of sound great, but then when you actually look under the skirt and you see what's really, what stuff's really made out of, it's not as exciting as, uh, or as trusty, trustworthy as you think it might be. Okay, and I also have a couple clear handled brushes, so I'm just going to grab a little of that blue, mix it into my mix here. It's just going to make a little gray, because that was kind of orangey, so I grabbed that blue. That's orangey red. I grabbed a greeny blue. I grabbed a phthalo blue, and that's going to give me... Just a gray. And I don't like how evenly spaced those are, so I'm gonna, I may have to add a couple more in. Now for the brush hairs, I'm just gonna go in with some brown. I'm gonna get this guy done. Look at that. Oh, that's fun. That's very, uh, <laughs> very exaggerated. That's okay. And since I just want different shades of brown, I'm using that same brush. I'm just picking up different colors here. Doing maybe an angular brush there. Flat brush. And just a tiny little. Let me do a little more of that darker brown in there. All right, I'm just going to tip this up and see how crooked my vase is. It's not too bad, actually. Okay, so now I want to glaze a shadow, and I'm going to go back in with my flat. Let me just wipe off the excess. And I want to load up some of that gray that I've mixed on my brush, and I just have it on the pointy end. So if I go like that, I'm just working it in there so it's going to kind of float across. 
and hopefully this is dry enough that I can shade. It might not be, but I'm just going to go with that. I'm not too worried about it dragging other colors around because it is glass. It would reflect some colors, so I'm good with it. A little bit of a shadow up there. And I'm going to clean it because I do have to get a little bit of the excess color off. I'm going to reload in that same gray and work it in. And there is some water in my brush. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem, but I do have water in my brush. And I want to get that shadow there. And at the bottom here, give it some form by getting it around the edges. A little bit on the bottom down there. And uh, I think I'm just going to go in with a smaller brush and give it a little bit of a little bit more depth there because that's not looking dark enough. That might need to dry before I can really do too much to it. But I'll just skip around. And I want to darken it up down here a little bit more. Uh, all right. Crisp up any lines I want to. I can even go in, because this isn't super, this isn't realistic. This is, uh, you know, definitely more of an impressionistic painting, so I don't really have to feel the pressure to make anything exact. I can just go in and play. Playing is good with your art. Nobody's going to see that vase and the painting together. Well, except on my blog. I will show you that. So, don't worry about it. Okay, so now let's work on our handles, our brush handles. I need a little more yellow ochre. These are 20 milliliter tubes. Gosh, I really hope I can clean that off that plate when I'm done. Because <laughs> I like mixing on ceramic. Uh, it's nice. It's unlit, you know, it doesn't jiggle and wiggle around like a... Like a... Um, disposable pallet wood or paper plate wood. And grab a little bit of uh, that brown. Work into the shadow. And this also has like a little sleeve on it. with a smaller brush or pointier one. It's still a little sizing in it, but I think, yeah, it's fine. A little highlight, a little more white. So that's, I think that's kind of what irks me about acrylics is always having to stop and squeeze out more paint and it dries on me. If I get interrupted, then I waste paint. So, uh, so I think that's probably why acrylics aren't my forte, but I was very curious about this and when a viewer asked me to review it, I thought, oh, wait, why not? The company was generous enough to send me um, a sample in order to do that, so I figured what the heck. While I'm at it, I can go ahead and throw some highlights around here. I also feel like I may, before I do highlights on there, I feel like I want to do a little more toning I think I want to warm it up a little bit, maybe with a little wash of yellow ochre. It's just a little too clean looking. It doesn't have that vintage yellowing that I feel like it ought to have. So I'm just kind of going in there and putting some of that warmth. I 
I can go ahead and paint that handle over there too. I like that white in there. Let's add a little white, lighten it up a bit. Let's get a thicker handle. Let that overlap the other brush there. Going with a nice streak of this yellow ochre. So I think you'll find that this paint paints out an awful lot like um, any other acrylic that you may be accustomed to using. Mixes really well. Now we need to make some more gray for the ferrule. I need a little more brown. Brown and blue to make our gray. And then a touch of white, because it's way too dark. It's almost like a black. I could use, I could have used a black. I mean, a lot of acrylic artists do. I was just kind of painting it a little bit more like I typically do. You can do whatever you want to do though. Everybody's got their own deal. Everybody's got their own way they like to work. And get the Fairlin on this one while we're at it. I'm not going to be too fussy with any of it. Do the feral on this one while I'm at it. I'm going to have to thicken out the handle because I made that way too thick. Just go in and get these while I'm at it. Again, realism is not what I'm going after here. I'm just uh, just having fun. And the nice thing about acrylics is if you make it get a splop of paint where you don't want it, you can paint over it. And that's something that uh, doesn't work so well with watercolors, so it's kind of nice to have that feature. I'm going to grab some white on a flat brush right on the chisel edge. And then for a I have some brushes with some clear handles here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of try to add some, some sparkly highlights there. I don't know if they're going to look clear when I'm all done, but I like to do that for the um, for highlights sometimes because I feel like it it's a little easier than trying to control a round brush uh, because the paint's heavier and more viscous. I find that often it's it's difficult to uh, get that sharp line that you want. Well, I won't be surprised if after this uh, tutorial I stop getting requests to paint things in acrylic. <laughs> be like, yeah, we're all set with that, Lindsay. Go, go back to watercolor, please. <laughs> forgot to put, uh, we forgot to put hair on this guy. Bloop. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> And I think I need to do a little bit of something with my, uh, with some of my, some of my, uh, whatchamacallits, the, uh, the hairs here kind of 
feel like some of them need a little bit of lightning. Make that one a dagger or something. A lot of them got kind of dark. And misshapen. Looks like I don't know how to take care of my brushes. <laughs> Look at this picture. <laughs> Looks like, oh boy, Lindsay, you need some brush care maintenance help. Okay, now I'm going to do a little more shadowy color here. A little more blue, that's pretty icky looking. A little red in that. Anything's fair game. Anything I've been using so far is fair game to mix my grays with. I think after I'm done here, if I spray my palette with water before I let it completely dry, I'll be able to wipe, it, wipe away any sort of mistake. So I'm just going in pretty expressive shadows. I'm not happy with the way the bottom of that vase looks, to be completely honest. I just feel like I'm lacking a lot of definition and it's kind of bugging me. It looks fussy to me. How fussy does it look? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> oh, strike that. I don't think I want to know. I know I'm not a, uh, I know acrylics are not my forte. Something there. This just isn't working. That is not right. I need to need some work. All right. So now I need to do a little bit more deliberate shading here. See what I have. See how much gray I can make from what I have here. I might need to squeeze a little more out. I try to, and this is probably awful, but I try to like, when I'm painting with acrylics, I try not to leave any paint left over. I try to use it all up. So that's probably a bad idea because, because I, pro I usually end up over like going a little too far because I am trying to use it up and not waste it. So I know my lights over here because of how light I painted that there. And so I'm bringing some shadow off the bottom and just kind of bringing it around there. I also need to darken a little bit around in the front here, I think. And I'm going to take it right off the the side just to kind of, I don't know, add a little more interest because right now I think it's kind of dull. I might need to add some more light strokes up there to kind of give it that kind of diagonal um, composition to make it work. So these are kind of like the elements of, of uh, style, the elements of art, um, kind of the fundamental things that that you think about when you learn about when you're learning how to paint. So I think, how do I want my eye to go through the painting? How do I want it to, uh, to look? What do I want the viewer to do? What do I want the viewer to see? I'm going to do some yellow ochre and some white. I need a little more white. I'm going to be out of white. I can tell you that before I'm out of any other color. <laughs> A lot of times, um, this one, this set doesn't, but a lot of times, uh, like if you buy a kit of acrylic paints, they actually give you more, uh, like an extra tube of white just because you go through it so quickly. I just feel like I want some expressive, expressive light over here. It's like sunshiny happiness. Yellow ochre plus white. I love the color yellow ochre. It's one of those colors I feel like it's like a, um, it's a joyful sweetening color that makes everything look nicer. It's kind of like a little black dress. It's just, just yellow ochre almost looks good in every painting, I think. You got the sun coming through the light. It's a beautiful day. You're going to do some painting because you get your brushes out. Life is good. We're going to do some of this. We're going to do some of that on there too. And at this point, I'm just kind of like adding my expressive lines. I'm not looking at my reference that much right now. I'm thinking, how do I want this to feel? I want this to feel like, like, um, like joy. Like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to paint. This is my painting. This makes me happy. I'm looking at this thinking I get to paint today. I'm not thinking at this that, well, I need to represent this perfectly because 
I'm painting a rendition of this um, of this vase. I'm thinking, wahoo, painting time! I'm sticking my hand in the wet paint. Honestly, I typically would paint this on an easel too. Because when I'm hovering my arm like this, I have a hard time keeping it steady. So if you're um, if you're having that issue where you're trying to paint, and you're like, boy, I cannot paint a straight line to save my life. I'm just all over the place. Try working on easel or propping your picture up on a um, on like a book or something like that. Uh, my easel right now is just, I just can't even put my tripod on the floor to be able to film at my easel right now. We're in a little bit of a messy situation here. I could tip it up kind of like that though. I got some crap on my table. I can like clean this up on. <laughs> ah, good thing, right? Give it a little bit of a slice of highlight there. Can to give it a highlight there. Hmm. Look, I need a little more white paint. I'm just doing small dabs at a time now because I don't want to waste it. I know I'm not going to need that much. I'm almost at the finishing stages. So I don't want to, uh, to take more than I can use up because that's just wasteful. And also, here's a tip. If you are if you're think your drawing is a little bit off you don't you know just do little slices of highlight don't try to um put anything in there perfectly because if you just do a little slice here and there your brain will fill in the rest and it will be like um your brain will you know your 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 brain will do the work for you and make you look make it look good does that make sense sometimes talking and painting is difficult especially for me <laughs> And this is where I get to the point where I over highlight because it's like, well, I'm not wasting any of that white paint because that's pretty precious. <laughs> and we're going to do a little more highlighting on the handles there. I'm going to rest my hand here because like I mentioned before, and that's already pretty dry. Um, it's just really hard for me to hold my hand, my arms out away from my body for filming because my I'm, I'm like 18 inches away from my, my painting here. Um, I don't want my head to be in the way so that you guys can see it, but I, uh... Oh, look at this. Don't do this. Don't let your paint creep all the way up to the metal because that's when you have, um... That's when you end up with paint getting underneath the metal into the ferrule, drying, expanding, and ruining your brushes. You want to try to keep your brush, your paint, to, like, the bottom half. So I'm going to switch over to this liner because I know I can keep it on the bottom there. And now I can do this a little bit better. And with something cylindrical, like a brush handle, you can see highlights anywhere. It's fair game. You'll see it on the edge. You'll see it here, there, and everywhere. So don't worry if your highlights aren't all on one side, aren't all on the light side, because it won't necessarily happen like that. And now I'm going to take a little bit of dark, and I'm going to do a little bit of the bands here on that. Watch out for beads on your brush, beads of water. Those, are, those will run down, and they will leave an awful mark and make you sad. I don't want any sad painters here. And I'm just going in and defining with a little bit of that dark gray mix. Crisp up a few lines. It's kind of like how you crisp it up with the highlights, but, um, but when you're doing it with the shadow, it's not as noticeable, so if it's not quite right or if you overdo it, you're really not going to notice it, which is kind of nice. You can fake it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I got a wiggly line, but it was with a shadow color, so you're not going to notice it so much like you would with a highlight. So we're good. As long as your highlights are straight, you're pretty good. I am, try I am trying to keep my shadows mostly to the... Uh, to the left-hand side.
there. Finger eraser. Uh, this could be like a welcome to my studio painting. I could hang it on my door. And be like, welcome to my studio, friends. Channeling Bob Ross. Used to rehabilitate squirrels. I was catching a episode of his the other day on Netflix. I'm like, oh, he has those squirrels in his in his uh in his studio. I like people who are kind to animals. You tell a lot about a person by how they treat their pets. Okay, well, I think that about does it. What do you think? I'm gonna just mix up a, some leftover colors that are here. Ooh, I like that rose and that thalo blue. That makes a really pretty lavender, actually. I think it's because those two colors are quite transparent. And sometimes when you mix um, transparent colors, you get a clean mix, even if they're not what you typically mix to get a really bright color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write my name. Because I feel like I need something here too. That's also part of the reason I'm signing it here is to help the composition. And 2016. Yes, I have sloppy penmanship. And there you have it. There we've got a vase of brushes, a creamer full of brushes for your studio or wherever. Have fun painting, guys. I know you can do this. Um, and yeah, these are the Aquela watercolors by Kusabe. And I will put a link in the video description. I'll have a review coming up soon. Um, uh, I just don't, I don't want to review until I've tried the different techniques, the different ways to use this paint. And then I can give you a good... Um, a good feel, a good, good, give you a good opinion about them. And uh, by, all, by all means, use whatever acrylics you have to do this painting. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to my channel. Until next time, happy crafting.